Hey, Chris, it's Melody. Hey, how are you, Melody? Good. I wanted to ask you some questions about these mortgage rule changes that everyone's talking about, and I'm wanting to ask the expert. So what's, what's this look like, and how, what's happening for the first-time home buyers? Uh, well, first-time home buyers, if they're prepared in the next few weeks to make a buying decision, that's probably a good idea. Uh, the biggest change is obviously the fact that they've moved the benchmark rate. Uh, the benchmark rate is what is used to qualify, uh, typically on a variable rate or a term that's less than five years. Yeah. Um, historically, we've been able to use a five-year rate uh, to qualify someone. So what that means is, I mean, a benchmark rate isn't necessarily the rate that someone's going to get. Um, it definitely doesn't mean that their payment is going to go up. It's just they're trying to put a gap in people's debt servicing. So they use a higher rate of interest to be able to help people qualify. So an example that I ran today, uh, someone who makes, you know, about 65000 a year, uh, maybe has an auto loan and some minor small, you know, monthly debts uh, with the rules as they are right now on a five-year term. Uh, they qualify for about 350000 with 5% down. Uh, after October 17th, uh, that drops to about 285000 Ah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So that just means that people can't buy maybe what they want. Because, I mean, a house for three fifty and a house for two eighty five are two totally different houses. Yeah, yeah. And, I mean, it, it definitely it takes you into a different price bracket for sure. Um and they consider all things in that. So now if it puts someone in the price bracket of now only being able to afford a condo, uh, condo fees are now incorporated or always have been, but condo fees are taken into consideration in yes. that debt servicing. So now people still have a chance to buy it in the old qualifying. Like, do they still have that, that ability right now or is it too late? No, it's not too late. Um, what the specifications are, what the, I guess, restrictions have been laid out to be is after October 17th, you will fall into the new guidelines. But if you have an accepted offer and an approval that's submitted to a lender uh, before October 17th, you're okay. You still fall under the, the, the current October guidelines. October 17th is 14 days away. It is. So, so urgent, there's definitely an urgency. So for, if you're uh, sitting on the fence uh, wondering if you should buy a house, maybe you should get off the fence now. It's going to yeah, cost you more. Uh, yeah, now might be a good time. So, okay, if they are approved before the 17th, but they don't have a pending offer, do they still, what happens there? There has to be a property. There has to be something in writing from uh, from a lender okay. uh, and potentially a mortgage insurer, if, if obviously it's less than 20%, saying that they are buying um, a property in a specific property before that time uh, and taking, this is the other key, and taking possession of the property before March 1st, 2017. Okay. Well, obviously before Christmas is good. But you're saying if, just to recap, you need to have your application in before the 17th, yep. a pending offer before the 17th yep. to get in with the old rules. If not, yep. you fall into the new rules and you have to adjust your expectations of what you're able to purchase. Absolutely. Okay. And so obviously any questions that other people should have, they should obviously give a mortgage broker call. I would recommend giving Chris a call. Um, what's a good number to reach you at? Uh, best number is uh, probably my office, which is 780-416-1085. Okay. Uh, and if not available there, then you can always try me on my cell, which is 780-695-9050. Okay. Thanks for taking time to chat quickly about this. Wow. I know everyone's talking about it, so I appreciate your insight. No problem, Ellie. Okay, see ya. Yeah. Bye.